So hello there guys and welcome to Ivar's Fly Workshop. Today we will be tying a pattern, a Master Splinter mouse pattern, like this one. And uh, this has been the last years like uh, doing pretty good things in Icelandic waters uh, as well, for brown trout especially. And we are going to tie like this one, one of those master splinters to today. <clears throat> As you see, the uh, I have fair flies that I got sent from a friend in America, and uh, you see this coracular hair. Yeah, this is very much a light the uh, master splinter mouse, but. Uh, I think I'm right with that, that the Grockler, Grockler uh, model is uh, older. You see, it's very much alike. It's uh, kind of the same build-up and the same idea. And it has foam on the back to increase the buoyancy of the fly and uh, keep, keep it uh, floating. So... Um, this has been like a, it's been like a really hard winter for us, but uh, we'll start by attaching the thread to the hook shank. And as you see, we are using relatively large hook for this fly. And uh, it's uh, important that the gates of the hook is like open. If you tie it just on a classic streamer hook, the gates on the hook may might be a little bit too narrow and we are using like a heavy thread for this uh some fly nano silk uh, 110 year in black color you can just tie it in of course uh, if you are tying the mouse in some different colors you can use uh, different colors uh, for the tail of the mouse we are using this uh, rapid sunker strip and uh, I'm gonna cut off part of the fur from it so we will just leave cut it in the middle and leave like a little little, little piece on it on the other end so we'll we'll start our trimming here by cutting off the cutting off the fur like this hopefully you can see what we are doing here but uh, it is like we say important to maybe not trim it all the way down. This leftover fur here, I would uh, totally suggest that you keep that because that's something that you can use for dubbing. So the tail of the mouse or or the rat or whatever fly it is you want, it's like a mouse, um, is ready. And we will start by attaching that down to the hook shank with uh, relatively uh, tight wraps and uh, as I read online and contact, contacted people in the States I found out that uh, by experience of many anglers that uh, black colored mouses would be giving the best results. Uh, we are using for rabbit sunker strips. You are just using those. Uh, it's like a mix pack from Herland Dubbin, and uh, you can, if you buy packs like this, you can kind of you know choose the colors you like. I'm using a sample fly uh, foam for this. It's like a thin foam, but uh, you can also just go and use a craft store foam. And this is. I'm going to show you how the. Um, the width of the foam I'm using, that is just like one and a half centimeter. That is like, yeah, kind of almost like a little bit more than a half an inch. So uh, I pre-cutted the, the foam and it's like this thin. Uh, the hook we are using, that's a uh, and that's an RX Predator Stinger hook, number two. It's really cool hooks from RX. And uh, 
that's yeah, look at what I said. The gate of the hook is the uh, it's very much important for it. So here comes the uh, foam. The foam part will just lay it on the back of the hook like this. Take tight wraps on it, not too tight, but yeah, tight enough to keep it in place. And it the foam will turn when you wrap it on, so it'll just readjust the just the foam and make it like make sure you can fold the foam forward when it comes to that. Like after we are done with this stuff here, then we are going to uh, tight down the the foam. Some people uh, would not like to keep this amount of foam on the hook shank, but uh, for buoyancy, I would definitely recommend that. You can also put super glue or or some some stuff on the back to strengthen the fly if you if you like but that's all up to you as a tire and then then again you can mix the mix the colors of it if you, if you want uh, the body of the fly like the over body is like a black rabbit sucker as well some would say that uh, like a crosscut sunker would be better for this. I think it mm, does not really matter, but uh, if you have a crosscut sunker, that maybe the fur will be turning backwards or facing backwards. But but I think it's like uh, not the most important thing in the in the in that perspective. So we attached the. Uh, Attach the sunker, rabbit sunker down, and now we have to wrap that around the body of the of the fly, and we have to comb or make sure that the hair on the sunker strip will face backwards, and we will use a needle, you know, to help us out to. Uh, to prevent that we are trapping in some fur that's something which we do not want to and while we wrap the sunker strip forward we we'll wrap it like this so we are not wrapping the same strip over itself again it's like an important thing as well so we'll just wrap it there slowly and, and steady and comb the hair or, or make the hair goes backward with our fingers. And you can, if you feel like safe, safer by using saliva on your fingers, you can absolutely do that to prevent the hair to be in its place. Yeah, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel, good folk. And you can support the channel if you like as well. On uh, our PayPal account or, or buy me a copy coffee.com. You can see those uh, instructions in the description of the video. Then we have gone with the sunker strip all the way forward, uh, taking care of it that it's not be like trapped under each other. That's very important. Then we take tight wraps to. Uh, Secure that the end of it is gonna definitely gonna be staying in its place. They will snip off the rest of the fur there, so it's not gonna be like an extra bulk on the here. And this piece there, the leftover piece of the sunk strip, that's something you can use for like a streamer in the size of maybe eight or ten or something. So I will definitely not uh, definitely suggest that not throwing that away. Uh, now. I'm going to use a needle and show you how I'm doing the uh, hairstyle work on the fly. So we split the hair in uh, two. So we comb them like uh, away from each other to, so we can kind of see the hook uh, shank like this, like, uh, like the hook uh, back of the hook. Then we add just this, like a little saliva on your fingers and uh, Comb the hair down like this, and when it's wet, you can. Uh, it's gonna stay in its place when it's uh, wet. So it's like marble and, and some very fluffy materials. Definitely much easier to work with if if it's wet. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now and uh, 
show you what we're doing. Next step, that is to fold over the fold over the uh, foam. And now we're going to take our thread all the way to the just in the very end or just right behind the hook eye. I'm gonna build up like a little platform for it. I know that it's like a long video of making a simple fly, but this is just like to show you guys how it's made step by step. It's like an instruction for like, yeah, some somebody would say beginners or some stuff. Then we wrap this um, cat's a foam with our thread. This did not work out, so what we're going to do is gonna, we will be folding the foam like this. It's gonna be a lot easier to get a grip on it. And then we are going to take like a couple of looser wraps and then we are, then we'll tight, tight in the wraps, like seriously tight as much as needed, but not that tight that you cut the foam with the thread. So that is one of the things that's important to uh, use like a heavy thread for this flight, so you will not just simply cut through the foam. Uh, the head of the mouse, that is something which we make like this. We fold the foam and leave like a little chunk on it in the front of it. That's going to be the head of the mouse. And while you leave it like this, uh, See it there. When you leave it like this, it's gonna increase the buoyancy of the fly, definitely. And it's gonna help that it's the while you're pulling and dragging the fly on the water, it's uh, preventing it going underwater. So it looks like a hat, like and with ears and stuff, and and, and it's definitely helping helping the fly to stay floating, stay afloat. And uh, when you attach the fly to the to the leader. We'll just push this uh, thing backwards a little bit. It's definitely okay to do so. And then we'll take those tight, tight rats here. Adjusting the hat as we wish. And then we're going to snip off the, the rest of the foam. The rest of the foam, that's not maybe, I don't know, maybe an inch or so left. And that's something which you can use for making other flies, like the foam ants or foam beetle or just whatever it comes in your mind to, to make. Uh, the last years in Iceland, uh, mouse-like patterns has been like, uh, they've been getting more and more popular, especially for the people who are fishing like seriously big brown trout, like in the Thinkwetters Lake and the area around Thinkwetters Lake, and then again in the north part of Iceland, like in Laxá and Avaldalur and some some other places. What I will and what I'm going to try for the next season is to try to tie this fly in a smaller on a smaller hook with like that white uh, hook cage as well. To see if I'm successful with a smaller trot on this, and it's going to be like an experiment for me. So we, yeah, we've done the whip finishing here, like uh, three or four whip finishes, like um, to secure the knot, definitely, so it's not going to slide or be going anywhere away. And you see that you can just fold this head back when you put the leader in, and it's like the eye of the hook is just free and it's going to be no problem by uh, to get your hook to the leader when you take this uh, mouse and let it swim for for the trout. Um, I'm going to place just like a sap gap on the on the on the knot. I mean it's like a super glue and it's uh, super strong and super durable. I place it just on the head there just to just coat the top of the of the knot, it's spilling a little bit on the on the foam. That's okay. And then we are going to take yeah, a little bit more amount on the on the bottom of it to let the knot really drink the sapper cap in, and then it's gonna be staying in its place, and it's gonna be durable, and be it's gonna be able to take more than one or two big prawn trots on this flight. 
So here you have it. This is the uh, Master Splinter mouse fly pattern from the from the US. I'm not familiar with the guy who actually made that pattern in the beginning, but it maybe yeah, it doesn't matter actually. It's a great fly. Obviously, great fly. It looks great and it zooms great, and the buoyancy is just perfect when it's tight like this. So yeah, you can have a look at this fly. It's, it's a beauty. So I just want to say to you guys, uh, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And thanks a lot for watching. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video.